We are replacing a sprinkler pump and motor today. The old pump is just worn down. It's just not putting out that pressure anymore. So we disassembled the old one. We actually cracked a pipe in the process there. For safety, the switch is off. The outside switch and the inside breaker is off before we even took it apart. So we went to the store and got a new one. The new pump is a little bit lower but longer. Puts out the same amount as the old one. It's for three zones, residential use. If you see, it's about two and a half to three inches lower to be able to reuse the old piping. Especially this one going to the uh, zone changer here. It just needs to be extended. So anyway, we figured out all the parts we need. New PVC fittings, small pieces of pipes, one and a half inch and two inches. We made a trip to Lowe's and picked it all up. This is a waterproof fitting that will uh, connect to the uh, wire conduit. We will get to that last. This back cover will come off and we'll be able to do all the wiring. So here's all the parts we picked up. We have a one and a half inch connector, a reducer from two inch to one and a half inch thread, one and a half inch to one and a half inch thread. We have an elbow for two inch. PVC cement and primer. A tape measure. Sanding paper. Two short pieces of PVC pipe. One and a half inch and uh, two inch. Not to forget the hacksaw. To be able to reuse the output, we put in an extension right about here so we could save the shutoff valve there and the faucet and the attachment going to the zone changer with a one and a half threaded fitting. For the one and a half inch pump inlet here, we will cut the two inch pipe coming out of the ground lower. Add a new elbow and make an extension attaching the reducer from two inch pipe to one and a half inch thread for the pump. We will cut all the fittings and put them all together to make sure they fit before we cement them. And we will start with the output. We saw off the old one and a half inch pipe with the old thread fitting where we will add the extension. Sanding clean where we glue the new connector. Teflon the thread of the one and a half inch fitting for the output. Install permanently on the pump. Install the output assembly to the zone changer so we can measure the distance for the extension. Looks like we're going to need a six and a half inch extension. It's a good idea to cut these pipes as even as possible. Sand and clean. Assemble without cementing so we can measure for the extension on the inlet side. Now we can cut the old elbow and extension from the 2 inch inlet pipe. So we can add a new elbow with a longer extension reaching the pump. Before measuring we install the threaded fitting and we already wrapped the uh, Teflon on the thread. We will need a uh, 6 inch extension. Again, sanding clean around the pipe where it will be joined. We're going to go ahead and fit everything together without cementing it and see if everything fits. If that to go, we'll go ahead and start gluing starting at the um, output. The most important thing is this coupling lining up. And it looks like everything fits like a glove. We disassembled it and we start putting primer in every area. It's going to be cemented. Uh, this primer is very important. 
and it's a good idea to make it dry before applying cement which only takes about a minute to dry then we start putting the glue and this has to be quick because you don't want this stuff to be drying so we're gluing the elbow first it's coming from the inlet and the like Put it in and line it up as much as possible. Then we put glue onto the extension and the other side of the elbow fitting. Stick them in right away and put some pressure on it. And there we go. And at the same time, before it dries, just make sure everything fits. We have the output that we want to make sure it fits the end that screws into the zone changer system. It looks like it does, so we're going to go ahead and take this one apart and do the same thing all over again to these fittings. Put primer before cement. By the way, I know I keep skipping around between glue and cement, but it's the same thing. Yeah, this is one you really don't want to take your time. You don't want to wait more than 10 seconds putting uh, the fittings together after you applied glue to each area. And we're on the last fitting. Put that in and line it up. Make sure it's lined up with the coupling on top there. Let that set and you're all good to go. And while the cement is drying, we'll start getting the wiring done. Take the back cover off and make sure that before you start wiring, you, know, you insert them through the uh, elbow fitting, which is a waterproof fitting. It's a little bit tedious. You have to stick each wire in at a time. It's the, uh, the fittings at the end that actually interfere. After you put the first one, the second one rubs on the other, and then the third one. But um, it's doable. You just take your time, be patient. Screw in the uh, ground and then the positive and negative. And make sure that those terminals are very tight. By the way, if you're not comfortable doing electrical work, I advise to get a certified electrician. We put back the cover, but before tightening the screws, we're going to try the motor just to make sure we wired it correctly. We prime the pump by opening up the uh, faucet there, connecting the short hose from the tap water right there, and we should be good to go. Yep, those sprinklers are going. Now remember I told you the uh, shavings from sewing or cutting the uh, PVC pipe, they did clog most of the front sprinklers. so. All you got to do is just take each one off and take that white shavings off and put them back on there. And the last thing is to bolt the pump to the concrete pad. And the job is complete. I hope this helps someone out there. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment. And hope you all have a great day.